All right. Um, so I am going to do a quick series of videos just because uh, most of the videos on my channel so far are uh, recordings of live lectures. And so they were uh, all around 50 minutes to an hour. Um, and I know that not everyone has time to watch all that uh, going through it. So um, my goal is to maybe make, I don't know, four or five of these just to kind of explain key ideas that um, show up throughout the class. Um, and so, yeah, this is for uh, Econ 10A at UCSB, but it also applies just to any sort of intermediate microeconomics. So the first concept that we're going to be talking about, um, and this is what the video is dedicated for, is the concept of marginal rate of substitution, right? Also known as MRS. And um, we know this, right, as the ratio between the marginal utility of good one over the marginal utility of good two, okay? And so let's take a step back and let's think about what this means in the greater context of utility, okay? So we know that utility, right, is going to be a function of two variables. In this case, let's call it x1 and let's call it x2. Um, and let's just come up with a generic Cobb-Douglas example, right? So a x1 c x2 d, right? Where a here in this context is just a constant, c and d are exponents for x1 and x2. And so we know that with unit increases of x1, right? So if we get more x1, right, that's going to have a marginal effect on our utility. And that's the whole idea of marginal utility is how does my utility change with one unit increases of x1. And why do we care about marginal utility? Well, the reason we care is because if we're trying to make a decision about whether to buy one more unit of x1 or one more unit of x2, then we need to be aware of how much that's going to be actually affecting us, right? And that's, I think that's, that's pretty reasonable. So we have this, I, this kind of framework for marginal rate of substitution. And assuming that x1 and x2 are both goods, which they are in this case, um, you're going to want as much of these as possible, okay? And we know that in the real world, right, and this is why economics is a field, we're constrained by what we have, okay? So um, we know that in the real world, we're constrained by, um, we'll call it income, right, which we know is equal to M. So we can only allocate certain amount of money to each of X1 and X2, which is why we need to make decisions. And that's, you know, again, what we know economics as being about. Um, and so this is why the prices of each good is going to be uh, so important, right? So the reason why we are setting this equal to P1 over P2, right, in order to find the optimal amounts of X1 and X2 is think about it from this perspective, okay? Say that I'm offering you either one more unit of X1 or one more unit of X2. And let's say, for example, um, let's say, for example, that my MRS is equal to two, okay? This is just a, a, a made-up number that I'm coming up with. Um, and of course, we know that marginal rate of substitution is going to be different depending on how many units of x1 and, and x2 that we already have. But let's say that at the moment, it's equal to 2. That means that if I receive one more unit of x1, I will get twice as much utility as if I get one more unit of x2, right? The ratio between this is 2. And so when we think about it like that, right, we also need to compare it to the prices at which we can buy them. Right. So let's say, for example, that uh, the marginal utility of X1 is twice as much as the marginal utility of X2. Right. That tells us that we prefer X1 at this point. However, what if the price of X1 is three times as much as the price of X2? Well, in that case. Right. And so let's just say that P1 equals to three and P2 equals to one in this fictional example. 
we can buy uh, two, we can buy two units of additional utility, but it's going to cost us three dollars, right? Now hopefully that is kind of making sense. Or we could buy one unit of additional utility, but it's only going to cost us one dollar, right? And so if you compare it monetarily, three dollars of uh, X1 will get us two additional units of utility but three units of X2 will give us three additional units of utility, right? So this is why prices matter, okay? And so we know that at the point where our MRS is equal to the price ratio, right? So let's say that two, right? This is the MRS, this is the price ratio, and they're two and two. We know that this is kind of our equilibrium because of the fact that, um, essentially by increasing our consumption of x1 or increasing our consumption of x2 we're going to be getting the same amount of utility per dollar um, and so it doesn't really matter whether we buy x1 or x2 right we're not going to want to buy either one in preference over the other um, and so that's kind of the the intuition behind why we're setting our mrs equal to uh, P1 over P2, all right? Um, and if you're looking for example problems, I have plenty of example problems on the channel, but this is solely to give you guys a quick introduction as to why we are interested in setting uh, our MRS equal to um, our price ratio. And I think the decomposition of MRS into these two marginal utilities um, makes it a little bit easier to see um, visually. Okay, all right, so this is the first intuition video. Um, I work full time, so you guys might get another one coming up. Um, I'm not sure, I'm also lazy, so we'll see how that goes. Anyways, bye guys.